Today we're going to be talking about the Sigma 16mm 1.4 lens. I'm going to speak on my experiences, how it served me, and then maybe how it can serve you. So I bought this lens about two years ago. Sigma came out with this lens around that time. I paired it with my Sony a6300 camera. It was a great, great option. The first thing I want to talk about is the build of the lens. I had the Sony a6300. I came from using its kit lens. It was like a pancake. It was really small and very light and it was made of plastic and eventually it failed me. I upgraded from the kit lens to this lens. This was a big difference. Sense of image quality and also in the sense of build quality. The build quality of this lens is excellent. It's a small compact metal body. It's a nice weight to it but it isn't heavy to the point where it compromises its usability. If you're a photographer or videographer or just want an extra option in your bag, it really won't make a difference weight wise as it only weighs about one pound. It's a tough lens that can take a beating. I live in Toronto, Canada. The weather here fluctuates from very cold winters to very hot summers. And then even in the spring times, there's a lot of rain, wet, damp. I've taken this everywhere in Ontario and it's, it's held up very well. Image quality that you will get from the Sigma 16mm 1.4 is fantastic. Its images in both video and photo are very sharp. Everything from portraits, landscapes, want to do vlogging or professional work, Sigma 16mm will not disappoint you. The focal length is great on this lens. On an APS-C sensor camera, you're looking at the equivalent of a 24mm 2.1 lens. If you know what's trending right now, a lot of people are liking the 24mm focal length. 24mm f1.4 24mm 1.4 24mm 24mm GM lens. This is the one lens, if I was to only have one lens, this is the lens I think I would have. If you just lens, one for I only have Sony one camera. This, this is, is lens probably it. Code. Sigma 24 to 70 f 2.8. What? This is so I found this focal length to be very versatile and I say that because at the 24 millimeter focal length you're taking shots that are wide but they're, they're not so wide that it causes a lot of distortion. It's not a portrait focal length either but if you're taking a picture of somebody so sharp that you could just crop in there's enough depth of field that it appears to look like a portrait type image. I'm going to show you that. If you're taking pictures of landscapes I think the best aperture for landscapes like for far images is probably going to be around f10, f11. If you're taking pictures of people I believe there is a sweet spot on this lens for it to look very nice and that is going to be from close to like a medium range if you have the subject very far you're going to look kind of tiny or like stretched or elongated kind of a strange look but if you have them close to a medium range they look rather still normal but then like i said you can crop in and it will look like a portrait image and the quality, the sharpness is there. So it's kind of like you're cheating in a sense. Point and shoot, click, take a wide image. Then in post, the person that's in the middle, you're just gonna crop in and it's gonna look like a portrait. The image will be sharp, they'll be in focus and they won't look distorted in a sense. Focal length with this lens can work with or against you. It depends how you look at it. For example, if you wanna make someone look bigger than they are or buildings or things, you're taking the picture, just go closer and angle the lens up. And that's gonna give the look that that thing or that person is bigger than you know, it really is. So it could, it's a technique you can use, but if you want the subject to look normal, just take a regular photo, have it, you know, level with them and it should look fine. If you watched my other video, I talk on the Sony a6300. I'm talking about the image quality from that camera, but it was paired with this lens. So if you haven't seen that, maybe go check that out um, because 80% of what I'm talking about in that camera review is hand in hand with this lens. Basically the image quality from this lens is exceptional. Uh, it's just, it's very sharp. When you take pictures, if it's like a portrait type picture, if you're close enough, you could see people's pores even if they're far away still sharp landscapes sharp it's just a great lens all around it's a prime lens the image is obviously going to be sharp another thing too that was important to me at the time was autofocus this was my first sigma lens and i was going to mount it onto my a6300 which is a sony camera i was worried about autofocus but i watched a couple reviews and the autofocus seemed reasonable upon purchasing this lens i have to say <laughs> The autofocus blew me away. It is super, autofocus. super, super fast. The autofocus capabilities with this lens is going to turn your camera into a point and shoot. I'm not even joking. Like I said, I had this setup, A6300 with the Sony 16 millimeter. It turned it into a point and shoot. For some people, that's gonna be a big, big deal. For me, it was. I was big into the music industry and I was doing a lot of behind the scenes. So every time I was around different artists or people, it was important that I got a shot that was in focus. When I was around these people, it's just very exclusive experience. You're not 
not gonna get another opportunity to take that shot again or that moment. I'm more of like a documentary type content creator, I would say. I like to capture people or things in their essence and then maybe a little minor touch up here and there, but, but basically point and shoot, point at your subject, focus, click, and that's it. And I'm talking autofocus for photo and video. I'm basically taking the camera and just pointing it away and pointing it back. Pointing it away, putting it back. Every single time, nine times out of 10, it's snappy. I play a lot of video games and this is called aimbot. <laughs> I haven't used a camera system like this. I, it's just crazy. It is so fast. Click on, point, shoot. Reliable, fast, reliable, clean photo. And that was a big thing for me. All right guys, so we have the Sigma 16 millimeter on the Sony A6300 balanced on the new Ronin RS2. Right now we're at the distillery district here in Toronto and we're gonna take some footage. For me, I like to do a lot of gimbal work for music videos and landscapes. I just think like the establishing shots with this lens are just so sweet. They're, they're really nice. The autofocus is great. If you're just going straight, if you have your autofocus set to wide or landscape, you're gonna get great images. Following a subject, it's gonna follow. The focus will track, it will follow. And nine times out of 10, it won't fail you. I've used this lens for about two years as my primary and I gotta say like, it, it hasn't failed me. Regarding this lens's manual focus, I thought I was gonna be disappointed because it is a focus by wire system. I found that you can pull focus pretty reliably. It takes some time to get used to, but the manual focus system is smooth and I actually like it. On the lens, there's actually no stop. It, it can go forever. At first I was kind of like iffy. I actually kind of like it, like it's not too bad. The Sigma 16 millimeter 1.4 in low light is great. It really does bring in a lot of light. I'll leave a link to a quick video I made to a low light review. I only pushed the Sigma 16 millimeter to 2.8. I could have went all the way down to 1.4, but I didn't and it performed beautifully. So I'll leave that up there. Low light capabilities are definitely there. In terms of autofocus and low light, it's possible. There has to be light on your subject. You have to think from the camera's perspective. There has to be something for the for the camera, for the lens to focus on. If it's like pitch black, the camera's gonna be confused, right? It's not gonna be able to distinguish a subject foreground to the background. It needs something to focus on. As long as your subject is noticeable, it will focus, no problem, even in low light. In the video that I linked, that was all autofocus. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk about cons. I watch a lot of other reviewers or YouTube videos regarding this lens, and I have to say there just really isn't many cons. The only semi-disappointing thing that I could think about of this lens was that there was no OF. And I say that because it is a pretty wide focal length. It just would have been so clutch if there was like some type of OS. For me, especially because I used it for video and establishing shots. So when I was on the gimbal, it just would have been really nice to have OS. It would have been convenient. And again, it's nothing a gimbal plus some warp stabilization can't fix. I feel like if they added OS to this lens, this would have been one of the holy grails of lenses created. Other than that, I think another one of the cons that people talk about is that you're stuck at one focal length. But I mean, it's, it's a prime lens, right? So you're sacrificing the convenience of focal length, but you're gaining image quality. And if the convenience of focal length was a deal breaker for you, you probably wouldn't even be considering the Sigma 16 millimeter 1.4. I know for me, I really enjoyed being stuck at one focal length because it made you made you think, it made you move in order to get the shot. You had to physically move to frame your subject or line up your next image or shot. You got creative and that made for some really unique images and opportunities. If you're worried about image distortion, it's not a big deal. When you take a picture, there is some, but pop your photo in Lightroom. There's already like a picture profile in Lightroom for you to just click and it will just fix it for you. It's not even that big of a difference to begin with. I had one little pet peeve and that just had to do with uh, maintenance of the lens. Like I said, I brought this lens in a lot of physically enduring places, wind, snow, dirt, rain. It's gonna be the same for every lens. It's just tough to get little grime out of these ridges here on the focus rim. I still don't really know how to remove, how to get each each line clean. So if you have any tips for me on how to maintain the lens and how to keep it clean, please let me know. You can't really see it, but right here too, there's like this like dust or this grime here and it's accumulated from this one trip I made to Thunder Bay. It still hasn't come out. All right, so who is this lens for? I think this lens is a great option for anybody. It really just depends on your situation and the tool you need. At the end of the day, this lens is a tool and it is gonna do what the user tells it to do. In my opinion, I think this lens is a great option for filmmakers, photographers, urban, medium, or landscape images. But like I said, there is a portrait type quality to this lens and that comes into the crop that you do. 
or that you can do. For video, it's great for establishing shots, wide enough to create some really unique perspectives, but the quality is good enough that you can crop in if you want and not sacrifice quality, especially if you're shooting at 4K. I think the person who's gonna buy this lens is gonna be someone, someone who's on a budget or that is trying to enter photography or film, but not break the bank. So the amazing thing with the brand Sigma and why I respect them so much is because they're pushing the competition. They're creating products like this and they're forcing other brands and companies to keep up. Sigma is making a ton of lenses and products that are producing great quality images for a price that is affordable and that doesn't break the bank. For me, money has been an issue in the past. It isn't anymore. Even moving forward, you can go spend a thousand bucks on a Sigma lens or you can go spend 20 500 bucks on a G Master lens and the dollar to performance ratio, the more money you spend, that ratio goes down. Personally for me, Sigma line cover 90% of my expectations and that's that's more than I can ask for, especially at that price point. Even coming from a professional standpoint, if you're to run your business with this, I don't think 10% warrants the extra thousand bucks. Go spend that money on something that's gonna make you better at your craft or you just rent. You need equipment, you just rent. There's different levels to being a creative. When you're first starting, using all your equipment. When you're kind of in the middle of it, becoming a professional, you've now invested into higher grade equipment and the quality is better. But then when you're doing like expert jobs, professional jobs, they don't even consider these. They don't they don't consider these lenses. When you're doing an expert job and you're on a professional set, they're using equipment. You know, lenses are worth 10, 20, 30 thousand dollars. Camera bodies alone, 10, 20, 30 thousand dollars. They have multiple people on set. Everyone has different positions. They have budgets and resources. They don't consider lenses like this. So for some like you and me this is a great option we don't need to worry about the highest extreme quality of lenses because in reality we're not even close to being at the highest quality regarding lenses in this craft so at the end of the day the sigma 16 millimeter 1.4 is definitely a recommendation for me fast reliable autofocus it basically turns your camera system into a point and shoot sharp it's a prime lens images are very sharp so sharp to the point where you can crop in without losing image quality budget friendly great price point especially if you're buying used it's definitely affordable for anyone quality that you will get from this lens will not disappoint you i hope this video helped you i really enjoy creating this type of content if you have gained knowledge or value from this video please hit that like button please hit that sub button i'm going to try to make more videos like this in the future and hitting the like button hitting the sub button is definitely going to help for the youtube algorithm you've heard it before it really does help another thing too that i want to ask you to consider is this video has helped you make a decision on purchasing please consider using the affiliate links below i don't know if i'll have them for this particular video but if i do please use them guys as a creator especially during these times it can be tough especially if you're not established as a creator i know for me personally I'm really trying to focus on building this channel up. I want to create a community where content creators can be a part of and I just want to help each other out. I want everyone to be involved. If you have any suggestions, if you have any helpful hints, drop comments below. If you see someone in the comments, you can answer their questions. If you have questions, reach out. Once again, I want to thank you for watching. If you do purchase the Sigma 16mm 1.4, you will not be disappointed. It's definitely a recommendation from me.